Hello everyone and welcome to Unity 2D Maze Game Tutorial. In front of you you'll see the finished product where you'll move around the screen as the red block and collect all these keys. And once you collect three keys the brown door will re get removed and if you hit the princess you win the game. Okay now that Unity project has opened up this sample scene here uh, you can choose what layout you want. Um, usually I go to the default and here is the scene window and that's what we want to get started with the scene window and if you scroll back you can see where the camera, if you drop down here, just by default where it shows up on your grid here. And so um, the first thing we're going to need to do is create a folder and we're going to need to create some sprites. So in order to create a sprite, you it's important to keep organized. So first we're going to make a folder and then sprites you can just drag on any picture that you have. Um, my recommendation would be to just screenshot using the snipping tool, a white, simple white block, that's a pretty even, and then save that as a PNG, and I already have that. So if I go into and get my white block here and just drag it in to my sprites folder, or you can access it by going into your sprites folder. And so 2D Maze Game Tutorial, we have our assets and our sprites, and you can put in uh, pictures through there as well. And so it's, it's a little bit easier just to drag it in here though. Um, so when I do that, it, and I click and drag in from your folder, it will create a new game object. And so we're gonna call this our background, and we are going to stretch this and you can just click in the middle and stretch or click on the X and make it wider or taller. I'm gonna make it uh, the size of our background. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna add some walls too. Okay, so after we've lined our background up, you wanna change the color. And the reason I made it white is because now you can pick the color over here. So you just have a simple block that you can work with. Um, instead of having to, to create your own, you just have a little sprite here that you can manipulate. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make mine just a soft gray. And I'm going to create a new 2D object sprite. And I'll call this walls. And this walls is going to have the white block sprite as well. So you can either drag it into the sprite renderer, which is over here on the side in your components area, um, or you can drag it on there. They, they both do the same thing and you'll see that white block is now attached as a sprite. And so um, what that does is since you created walls first and then you drug white block, the, these children can inherit from the parent class walls. Okay, and so um, we'll just create singular wall and then let's stretch it. Make sure here are your different tools you can use. Make sure your scale tool is utilized. And we could just make an outline for it. Once again, does not have to be perfect. Double click on it and then make sure that it is black it is in front of the background. And so um, whatever gets placed down, that'll start off in the back. But we wanna make sure that the background is the furthest thing in the back. And so you can either create different layers um, and add in those. You can add your sorting layers. And then you here's how you change uh, each one of these game objects, how you change them to different layers. But the easier way to do it, and, and at least for now, we're just gonna do negative one um, and then our wall is at zero and it will always show up but if our wall was at negative two for example it would obviously go behind it okay but at zero it'll be in front of it and everything that we add in will default to zero and be in front of it so in order to make uh, another one of these walls you can do control d and that will duplicate make sure you're on the move and you can move this up to the top and try to make it even if you can but and you can click on the scroll wheel to move around scroll wheel to zoom in and out 
uh, and since it's 2D, do not write, do not worry about, about turning it. Um, it makes it a little bit easier. So let's make this right at the edge. And so if we duplicate one more time, shrink this, and you can rotate. This will be the rotation tool. Um, so if we make our Z value right at 90 and shrink this down a bit, Oops, not the background. So if I accidentally click the background and change something, you can do control Z and it will always fix what, what you did and undo. Um, make sure you grab, I know now that this is wall two. So if I go ahead and let's move it over to the edge, make it a little bit smaller. And if you actually grab the rectangle tool, as opposed to the scaling tool, you can just draw this rectangle exactly how you want it, but you might accidentally change the width there. Okay, now mine looks pretty good. Duplicate it, change it off the rectangle, and I duplicate it by doing Control D. Um, and then you can scroll all the way across the screen. Okay. Um, so now if we pushed play and saw this, our camera will show this box that we have and we have them under walls. Now this is where I, I would just keep doing this and design the maze. So I'm going to go a little bit faster speed here and start designing my maze. So you guys go ahead and do the same by using control D copying and then the rectangle tool or the scale tool to start moving things around, um, and setting things up. Another option is to save an image of a simple maze. That's all I looked up um, and, and save that file. And then you paste it in there and then you can drag it in and then scale it to about the size of your maze. And then you can draw that maze, um, draw over it and then delete the picture. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so once you have your maze designed, you can go ahead and um, let's shrink this down. And now we're gonna add in our first player and we can create another 2D object that's a sprite. Okay, let's go ahead and drag it in as the sprite. And so the name stays right here so it doesn't make a child of it. Um, and we're gonna create player. And so our player can have any color. Um, you know, in, in future videos, I'll make sure we add in some sprites and we'll add in some sprites from online um, here in a bit. But uh, for now, I think it it's easy and fastest. Okay, so when you add in your player, um, do make sure that it is positioned at the zero for the Z. Um, this can make your object disappear because it can appear in front of or way behind the camera. So if I got, went off 2D, this red is still right along. And I wouldn't try to do this because you can get lost if you haven't worked with 2D very much or 3D very much. So our red is right there for us. So if we go back to 3D or 2D, excuse me, um, our player should show up for us now. Okay, and let's do our first code so we can have the player move around the screen. So we go to our assets, we create a new folder, and this is where we're gonna create our C sharp scripts. So new folder name, uh, could be scripts. So we have our sprites and our scripts right here, create a new C sharp script. And so um, with this C sharp, we're going to call it player. And this is going to be where all of our code for our player is going to be located. So our player, just by naming it, it doesn't add it in there for our player. You have to either drag and make sure perfectly that you see that little arrow icon and it's really hard to get in there. It's easier if you drag it down here um, and the player comes in. Another way to do it is you can type in player and then that's the C sharp script. So that'll also add in that, that player uh, C sharp file. So if you open up, the, by double clicking on player, the C sharp file, um, it'll open up visual studio for you. And video studio should have 2d maze game tutorial, the project that you're in 
This is the class player that we've called it and um, some pre-loaded packages that, that will allow you to, to access a few things starting off in Unity, okay? And so here we have the start method and here we have the void update method and those are automatically put in because Unity has a few different methods, well, quite a few methods that will allow you to get going. So the first thing to know is the start method. Uh, that will happen when the first frame is updated. Okay, start is called before the first frame update. So right from the very beginning, the first time you, you load things onto the screen. Update is a loop that is constantly running and is called once per frame. And uh, there's different ways we can control that based off of how many frames you want to go per second um, and things like that. But uh, that is what each of those do. So for our player, we don't really have anything that we need to have happen right at the start, but we have something we do need to be able to control and move around with the player um, as we move. And so we can create our first if statement, if input dot get key will access any input we've had um, into the computer based off of what key we've pressed and key code is a class that Unity has already made for us, and we can just get left arrow, and this will have something happen when the left arrow is down. And a great way to check that is debug.log and say something, and this will give. Um, We'll make this will make sure that the if statement is working properly, and this is a great check, a checking for errors uh, use right here. And by putting in left arrow, debug.log left arrow, and so if the left key is left arrow key is down, left arrow should show up in the console. So let me show you where that's at. One thing I forgot to do was save, and this is very important. If you see an asterisk right here, it means you've made changes and you haven't saved. So control S, and then if I push the left key down, it runs it a lot, okay? Um, and so that will prove that if the left key is down is working, but now we just need to do that for every direction. And since we know this works for the left, we don't need to test it over and over again. Right, up, down. So we're gonna need to translate our player and move our player around. So if you go back into your Unity, you will see that here we have our transform um, component and we are going to move the position of this component. And so uh, how you do that, you access your transform dot translate. And this is the most simple way of moving an object. And so because Unity is naturally a 3D world and you can move along the Z as well, for each one of your movements, you're gonna need to create a vector three and so uh, you can just put the positions. It's That's just the parameter that the translate is expecting, a vector three. And that means you have three, the X, Y, and Z locations, okay? And so if we are moving to the left, our X value will be something negative um, because our unity, if you see, if I have this player, and I wanna move them around the screen, and you check the X, Y, and Z. If we move to the left, it goes negative, the X value. If we move to the right, it goes positive, so it increases. If we move up, it increases, down, it decreases. So this is the lowest, the negative numbers for the X and Y, this bottom left corner, and further, 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 bottom left, okay? Um, so if we go into our and translate negative five for our X value, that will move us to the left. Um, and we're gonna change that here in a second, but I'll, I'll show you why. Zero, zero. Okay, now what that will do for us is um, move us five 
to the left. So let's test that. If we increase the size of our window, just bear with me now, uh, and go to your game mode and you push left, it will start moving really fast, five units to the left. We want a smooth transition uh, based off the amount of time that elapses during our game so that we're not moving five units every single frame, which is what we were doing with this. We want to times time dot delta time, and that's something that you're going to get need to get used to uh, in Unity with making these games. Is you're going to need to be able to move based off of how much time has passed, and so when you hold it down, it doesn't go every frame, but it goes less than that. Um, and now you can kind of see how that is different. So I can only move to the left now because it's time dot delta time, and it is only on the left side. Okay, and so if I copied and I pasted this and pasted it and pasted it, um, we could change left and right, positive and negative, and then up and down, this should be the Y value. Going up would increase it, so that would be positive. Change it from the X value where it is right now with a, a zero comma, remove a zero and a comma at the end, and now this five times time dot delta time is right in that float y location for the parameter here. Okay, and then you can actually just copy that and paste and make it negative five. Now, quickly, you can move all directions, but you can see we can move through walls. We don't want to be able to move through walls. Okay, and so um, with my five here, um, we're, we're having a little bit of an issue. So we want to program this correctly by creating a float speed and set it equal to five point O F. Now a float um, is what we use in C sharp for any decimal. And so you want to make sure that you have 5.0 F um, or however fast and make it a decimal and have F at the end to stand for float. Now we can make it private, which is the default essentially is private. And so that would make it only available inside this class, inside this code. And I'll show you what that looks like. And then we'll make it public and show you that in actuality. So go ahead and change all these fives to speed or negative speed um, and what I was saying and if you make it public if you make it private it works just fine but if you make it public I want to show you what it looks like in the code so if I move this around same same deal um, but now we're going to be able to manipulate that speed how we want and uh, is, is how you want to properly code is create a variable for it so so now I want to show you if I switch it to public speed I can play and move my character around. But if you notice in my player, speed is available to the public. So you can change that to 10 if you want. And then all of a sudden they move 10. And then now they can move 20, okay, all around the screen. So that, that makes it so that other classes can also access that uh, player speed if we want. Now, if you collide with the wall, we will stop you. And so what I'm gonna do, so there is a pre-made method in Unity for on collision, on collision enter 2D. And this parameter is requiring that we have some something that it collides with. And so that's what this collision stands for. Make sure these are 2D. If they are not 2D, they will assume it's 3D and they won't tell you that anything's wrong. And so it makes it very difficult to spot that error. So make sure it's 2D. Um, and we're gonna check if you have a collision with um, the game object and the game object's tag. We're gonna give it a tag so that when it interacts with anything of that tag, it will push off the wall. Now that we have this if statement, if our player intersects with anything with the tag walls, we will do whatever we want to execute within this if statement. So if you go ahead and we'll do a 
debug.log and say wall hit. Okay. So that, if we go back into Unity, Control S to save. We go back into Unity. And we change our walls class. And we add a tag. So you go to this tag in our inspectors. You got to be highlighted on just the walls. If you're highlighted on the individual one, only this one will work. Click on walls, tag, and we're going to add a tag. So our tags list now is empty. And so if we make it walls and save. Okay, so normally we'd create a prefab, um, which would save one instance of it, and then we could reuse all the same code and, and tag each individual one um, as we went. But since we haven't done that, we can, and I don't want to replace these and remake them. If you hold control down and push the down arrow when it's highlighted, it will keep highlighting all the way down. And then we can change the tag to walls. We're also going to need to add a component called box collider so you can just search up here box collider 2d make sure it's 2d and then the last thing we need is a rigid body 2d okay now this rigid body will make you have gravity and make these walls go down um, we don't want that and so we need to change our gravity scale to zero and we want these walls to be stuck so we want to have constraints to them so we'll freeze our x y and our rotation on these walls and then um, we also need to add for our player a box collider and a rigid body as well without having any gravity so here's our rigid body and our gravity scale will be zero we freeze our rotation only because we don't want our player if he nicks the edge of a wall we don't want it turning him and changing um, forcing them to go forwards and, and diagonally um, when we push up and down arrows. So we don't freeze the X or Y. We also need to add a, another box collider. Um, and you can, you can edit, but it, it automatically does it really well with this green box. But you could edit it if you, if you needed to. Um, okay, now we have all of those connected. So when we run into a wall, it needs to say wall hit down here uh, just like we put wall hit in our debug.log okay so when the wall is hit we want the opposite and guys this is the simplest way uh, to do walls uh, there's other ways you can do it but the simplest way is if you hit the wall do the opposite of what you've done with your move and so if I paste this and if I am hitting the wall and my left key is down every action has an equal and opposite reaction so that's kind of how we're doing this here every negative speed should be positive every positive speed needs to be negative going down here so when we're pushing down and we're hitting that wall it'll push us right back up the same amount okay so control s and save that and let's go ahead and, and run this and when I try to push it'll push me right back off the wall. I can go a little bit into the wall and um, you know, there's other ways you can do it to, to make that not happen, but this is just a simple way and our walls, our walls are working, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is add some objects that we can collect um, and I'm gonna have a door that's gonna be closed down here, gated off, uh, but if we collect all the keys in our game, um, we'll be able to unlock and open the door. Okay, so um, in order to do that, let's shrink our walls down. We're going to go ahead and add a new 2D object, Sprite, and we're going to rename this our keys. And in our keys class, we are going to need to have uh, some sprites that will be available, available for us. And so just like your uh, maze that you can download online, I like open game art and search key they'll have a bunch of different key options for you and these are all uh, mostly free um, check out armisius's uh, open art profile so if i drag the skeleton key that downloaded into my sprites folder i have my key and then i can drag this in easy as that 
we could place in our keys. And if I duplicate, control D, control D, and let's go ahead and make it over here. Okay, so I'm gonna put three keys in. And so if we put these all under the key class, we can do exactly what we did for the walls. And so just for visual purposes, this can show um, to bounce off walls. And here we can do if collision dot game object dot tag equals equals keys. We are going to use the destroy and this will just uh, erase it, delete it, collision dot game object, right? Okay, so first we're gonna check if the collision game object tag is equal to keys. So we're gonna have to set our keys just like we set our walls. We will destroy uh, collision dot game object. So um, instead of doing this repetitively, we will go ahead and make a prefab. And so if we go into our assets and make a prefab folder, just so we can learn from our walls mistake and so we don't have to highlight all of them, you can also make something called a prefab. So you take the key skeleton key and you drag it in here and you see how it turns blue. Um, if you delete these, you can go ahead and add in another of the prefabs or duplicate your prefab. And now we have three keys. Now they're not positioned correctly just yet. Let's get them in the right spots. And if you go into your, now your prefab, it has its own deal right here. And if you change anything, so let's change the scale of the Y value to make it shorter. And you see how all these keys now automatically shrink. And so if you wanna undo that, control Z, control Z, make sure your Y value changes. There we go, 1.8. Okay, so now your Y value is back. And what we're gonna do is change both the collider, which is not a box collider, um, we could use a box collider, but their Unity has better colliders than that. So we can look at collider. And if we choose polygon collider, it will automatically, check how sweet this is. You push edit to any one of these colliders if you want, but this polygon collider does a decent job and you can, you can actually edit it if you want. I want to make it more specific than that, but you could tuck it in here, um, make it as specific as you want. But depending on the object, sometimes it gets really close, even better than this, um, where it just perfectly surrounds it. And so you can't do that with a prefab um, just on its own because uh, it just assumes that these could be different sizes and shapes and, and whatever. Um, they are the same, but you can also um, edit them individually. And so it doesn't want to make any assumptions on the it will not allow you to push the edit button, but if you click on a specific one, those you could edit individually if you wanted, but they all have these Polygon Collider 2D, Polygon Collider 2D, um, because we've done it in the prefab, okay? So we could have done that on walls if we would have done that from the beginning, which we should have, but um, now that that's done, we, can, we, can, we still were able to edit it how we wanted to. So um, that is how you make a prefab. Now, so now that we have the polygon collider, we're also going to need to add a rigid body 2D to it. And we need to turn off the gravity once again. 
I'm sure there's a way you can just edit gravity to be off, but I don't want that for the next game. You never know when you want gravity. If you turn gravity on, you can check out what it looks like. So now, good, it's it's hitting it um, and being able to push it around because it can collide and it's not it's not ha doesn't have any constraints like the walls do. Okay, so you can push that around. Um, we need to go back to our prefab and just like the walls, how we tagged them all as walls, we never tagged these as keys so it doesn't read keys. And that's also why we do our tests because I didn't realize that um, until I thought about it. Uh, when if we did a test, I'd know exactly, okay, it's not really reading that it's contacting um, the key. It does automatically with the colliders, but it, it's not reading that it is a key tag. And I created a tag here, but you need to actually assign this tag to keys, okay? This prefab now will do it to all of them. Control S. There we go. Okay. So now we can collect that one. We can collect all the prefabs. See that one you had to go right on top of. You gotta actually be touching it. There we go. Okay, now we got all three keys. Sweet. Okay, so now that we have our keys in, um, let's go ahead and make things that we need to avoid. And uh, eventually we'll make these keys count up and we'll, we'll create a little score counter up here uh, that we can look at our score. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new 2D object, Sprite. And this is going to be our enemies. Okay, so enemies. So these are gonna be the parent of our enemies that we will create. So uh, we can name them whatever we would like, but enemy, and then we'll probably edit them and, and make them a few different things and we'll make this a prefab. So what we wanna do is I'm going to add from my sprites, my white block is going to be the object of my enemy that I've added in. So now I have a white block that I can manipulate however I want. I'm gonna make it about the size of the, the player, maybe a little bit smaller. Um, and then we're going to edit it to whatever color you want. I'll make it blue and then I can move this enemy around to a place that I wanna put it. Um, and you know, I would go ahead and, and now that you have these two, see if you can create on your own how to collide and go ahead and do a debug.log of colliding with one of the enemies. Um, and then if you wanna create a couple enemies, that's fine and just go ahead and run into the enemy. And so on the console, you can see enemy hit and that could be something that pops up on your console. Okay, so go ahead and take your time and do that now. Or you can follow along, keep following along with me um, and I am going to now that I've created this, I can go ahead and do that debug.log. I can copy, paste, enemies, and debug.log, enemy hit, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete that other part. Because our enemies, I do not want them to get destroyed if we run into them. We're trying to avoid these enemies. Okay, so now that we have that, control S, if I run this code, make sure my, so my player, there's Z value. See, I clicked off the 2D mode and went to 3D and it is way off. So a lot of times when you create your new objects, they look like they're there from our screen, but in our game view, our camera, is a bit in front of where the the blue can be seen so we do not want that so we want our enemy their position enemies so when we create our empty game object enemies our 2d game object it went off the screen and then so the child of it is at the z position in relation to where this is so this one was off so the enemy was also right next to it off um, on the Z value. So now we need to make sure our enemy has a tag of 
enemies. So we need to create that tag, then we need to set it. Got to do both. Enemies. Okay, once you tag it, you're going to need to add a rigid body 2D. It's already up here, sure. No gravity. Um, we do not want to rotate it, but we will have it move in a bit. Um, so we'll leave those positions off. Then we want to add a box collider 2D. And now, since it is tagged, box collider, rigid body, you can go in and you're hitting it and enemy hit pops up. Okay, we're moving it along now. We need to have our game restart if we hit it. So if we go back into our player code, we won't just do debug.log. We're gonna need to add a package that, that Unity has available, but we need to import it in. So um, here we will do using Unity engine dot scene management okay and if you see these things pop up unity engine dot scene management pops up enter skips to the end um, then we're going to use that which will allow us to do scene manager dot load scene scene manager dot get active scene dot name. So what this does, this will load the scene of the active scenes name. So in our maze game, sample scene is the active scene name and it is going to load it. How is it gonna load it? Well, it's loading it from the scene management class. So Somewhere in Unity, there is a public class scene management, and that allows the scene um, to be managed with, with load scene. And actually, you can highlight on it, and you can enter into that scene management class by clicking on it, and it'll tell you all the different operations that, that it's able to do. Load scene is, is one of them with a few different values you could plug in for the parameter. Okay, so now let's exit out of that scene management and we're going to go ahead and save and see if our object our game gets reset okay see that we run into it reload the scene if we grab one of these keys then hit it it'll reload the scene okay so that's how you reset your game so the reason mine's green or how you make yours a different color is you can go to edit preferences and then your play mode tint. Um, usually this is entirely transparent and basically you're going in and you, you see play and I can play this game and when I stop there's no difference. But I like to have mine in, in my preferences to be a little bit different color. So at least I know, and I want to be able to see it. So um, usually have it a little bit of a, a green, a light green. And then when I push play, I'll at least know that I'm in game mode. Okay. So that's how I do that. Now we want our enemies to move. And I'm first going to make enemy a prefab because I'm going to add in, I don't know, three or four. You can add in as many enemies as you want. And so let's go into our prefab and remember, this will save all of our edits to enemy. So when we add it in, it'll automatically have a box collider, rigid body, um, and, and be this shape and color and size. So that'll be very helpful to us. So I can just, simple as that, drag it in, and we have an enemy prefab, put it under here. It's already tagged correctly. This is for more for organization than anything else. Um, and so we can add in a few here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to have our enemies and their names. I have so few that names don't really matter, but if you have a lot, it might be a good idea to, to name them differently. We're gonna have these all these move in their own ways and you can have them move however you want, um, as fast as you want, um, but it's gonna be an animation essentially. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add a component animation 
So in order to do that, we're gonna need to go to Window. We're gonna to go to Animation and just go to the Animation tab here and that'll create a separate animation tab, but I just like to attach it here and, and kind of always have it hanging here and you can always save your layout. So I could save this current layout so it always starts with an animation, which I think is a good idea. Um, this animation allows you to easily move things around without having to write the code for it. Um, so you're able to move this this character. You also can use it with um, with running and jumping and animating a, an actual character. But this is more of just constant movement and a loop uh, that makes it really easy without having to write code, individualize each of the, the character's movements. And so um, enemy animate. Okay, for enemy animate, and maybe I should have called it enemy one. Um, but in order to do that, you first need to make sure enemy animate is there. Otherwise, you're going to need to hit the create new animation there. And then or click here, create new clip. And you're going to go ahead and do the record. And so you have this one highlighted. So this is the, the animator that you're going to have. So you can you can animate it per frame here. So here is each one of our frames. So if we go 30 full flame, if we go 30 frames and then we go up to all the way up to 60 frames, then we have that's when we have one second, 60 frames per second FPS. And so I want um, after a half of a second, my character to move down here. Okay, and so this is changing its position. Now, I want after one second, my character to enlarge to just about the size of that space. Then after another second, I'm going to have my character move all the way over here and just doing something fun with it. Okay, this is you have a lot of opportunities. Make sure you pause every straight line because otherwise then it'll try to move through the walls. And so notice I went down, grew bigger, moved sideways, so all straight lines. And so um, um, about after that long, it'll move up. And then maybe right after that, it'll shrink. And then what I want is it to repeat that in reverse order. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of the rescale. I'm going to have it copy. Okay, so I, I did control C and then I went to my spot, did control V. So then I'm gonna go to another spot. Oh, about 30, eh, 40. And I'm going to go back to this spot, but I shouldn't be scaling here. <clears throat> here, so you can follow it, kind of how it, what, what goes wrong when. Okay, so those are some crazy scaling. So we just want it to move to here, no scale. We just want position. So then it increases in size. So then let's go about 30. We are going to move it without scaling it to here. So we can go step by step. It goes here. Okay, and then it's moving, it's moving, it's moving. Okay, now let's have it move up to here. Then we'll move it back down to this spot. So copy, paste. So now instead of just staying there at two seconds, it'll move back down and then I'll move it ahead. Okay, then we go forward about another half, one and a half seconds to right here. 
So I'm going to copy, control C, control V. Now I left out the scale because I scaled here and I scaled and moved right here. But I'm just going to leave this size for this spot. Then I can actually also scale it here. And then at the very end, I think I want to copy and paste. So when it starts, it should be that big. It grows, it bounces back, and it goes back to its original size. Okay, and that should play on an infinite loop here uh, once we get it moving so okay so go ahead and try that and I'm just gonna do some movements here uh, real quick for these ones I just wanted to show you that you know it doesn't just have to be position you can even there's quite a few of them actually you can add in so uh, you can see rotation we haven't done and then you can do a bunch of sp different things with different sprites uh, so that you're running and jumping and and firing something um, all can be animated onto the screen if something happens. So this is just automatic animation, um, but a good first practice with it. Okay, so um, call this one enemy two, and then you guys can create some on your own and I'll fast forward through this. Oh, and then once you are done with that, we wanna make sure that this animation, so we'll go to our animation, and in our projects, our prefabs accidentally got these saved in there. We need to make our assets and we can create an animation folder. And we can grab those from the assets and drag this, this, and this into our animation. Now this is an animator controller, which for now we're, we'll just control right here. And we're gonna drag in our animation make sure it's just the play button and actually I just created this one this is the one that we created enemy animation okay and so now when we run the game that will happen but it only happened once so we need to make sure that this animation has a wrap mode so you double click on animation and you loop it okay now when we run it it will loop through that forever. And since we ended where we started, it'll be very natural, a little movement through there. And if I'm trying to get through this, I don't have a chance. Okay, hey, maybe you need to space those things out or, or do something a little bit easier um, to get through. I just was, was trying to make an example there and um, let's see, let's get to here. Maybe we'll change position a little bit. So at this spot, instead, I'm going to move my position up a bit. And on the way back, I'm actually going to move my position down a bit. Okay, so now um, instead of growing really, I'm just kind of Sing through there. So you can decide which side you're on. Um, maybe make them go high the first way through, and then back you go low, um, whatever you want to do with that. But that's just how you get them moving. So go ahead and animate a couple more of the characters. Uh, record. Okay, now that I have all my enemies animating correctly, um, I actually have one going around and then jumping over the wall. Um, we're gonna collect the keys and we're gonna have a door right here. Um, and that will be kind of our you win platform. And so if you collect all three keys, the door will become unlocked and open up. And then um, 
we can go and land on the platform and win the game, okay? So um, we are gonna go ahead and go into our player. And our player, it needs to count every time that we hit a key. Okay, so inside of our player, we're gonna create public, static, float, score, and it's gonna be equal to 0.0f. And what this is going to do is going to allow us to set score, and score will be consistent throughout, and when it's static, since it's consistent throughout the running of the program, you're able to access it from any class anywhere and really manipulate it how you want. So uh, since there's only one score, it's best to make that static. Um, so that that's one value, okay? So now that we have score, um, and score is zero, we actually don't want that to be a float because we don't want score to be a decimal. So score is going to be just zero. And then every time that we collect a key, we want our object to be destroyed, but first we want to do, First, we want to do score plus plus. So now we have score up when we collect a key, control S. So actually, I'm going to change static. And if we were needing to access score, maybe by projectiles that the player was, was using, we would need to, to use it as static so the bullets could get the, per, get the score and increase the score value based off what the other the bullet class would be doing. But since we're not doing that, we could just do public int score and still have our score plus plus every time we collect a key and then if we go in and play you can see that score is down here and we can go in and i can try to see what i can do to collect a key and you'll see our score goes up to one over here and so if you go around and you keep collecting these keys you can also move where you're you're in in the in the scene mode and so now we've collected all three keys and then we want the door to disappear uh, so now that we've learned how to count the keys in the code uh, along here the player script we're gonna have it show up in the text and so we don't need this but we are going to add in a UI and so our UI is going to be a text that's automatically gonna add in the event system and and a canvas and so don't freak out, but the canvas is this big, which is what your camera will see, and it'll ignore what your, your world is in the bottom left corner. But you can add in your text and change the color of your text over here. I'm just gonna make mine black, put it up in the corner, and have it say keys. And it's gonna start off at zero, okay? And so, now that we have our text set up, we can go into our, our player and go into our player code and we can have our player start off by adding in a new package, unity engine.ui for user interface. Okay. And so we're going to create a text class, which we can only access from the UI package. So we need to call this text, um, key amount so that we can keep track in our text of how many keys we have okay and then so um when we hit a key our keys go up but our text our key amount the text needs to change so we need to access the text and we're going to set that text equal to in quotes string keys colon space plus keys so this is how many keys we've attained and we're going to use that right here right after we have the keys colon okay so if we go back in here into our unity our keys is set up with the zero um, just set up basically from our text but when our player needs to get the key amount so it needs to have that text that we have right here and we can call this key amount, key text, something that uh, lets it pretty easy for the user and you to know what's going on. Um, so key amount is in there. And now when we run the game, we can access our scene here and cheat our way through. 
Um, I'm actually going to add in a key. I'm going to move the key right there. It collects it. Okay, so we switch back to our game mode and our keys switches to one. Okay, if I go in and collect another one myself, just to show you, there's keys equals two. Okay, all right, so um, now our score, I don't love where it is. That's probably a little bit better. Let's check this out. Nah, somewhere in between. There we go. That should be good. Um, and that will have our score active. Okay, now we need to add in. So let's go to our background. You can always double click that or actually your camera will zoom in a little more. And now let's go ahead and add in our door. So now in order to create the door, just like we've done before, um, since we have this white block sprite, it's pretty easy. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rectangle tool. And that allows us to grab and just pull. Um, it's a little bit easier in my opinion. And then we can um, maybe make it a little skinnier, change the color to a brown. Just go ahead and match all the browns there. Okay, there you go. And now we have a door. And let's go ahead and we can add in like a princess or something. So Princess Peach. And drag in a princess peach like we're in Mario or something um, and there you go what we need to do is if we collect if our keys equals three if this value equals three and we are colliding with princess peach then we will add in a, a UN text onto the screen okay so um similar to how we've added in other collisions we can just do another collision here and change the game tag to princess instead of load the scene um we're gonna do debug dot log you win Okay, and, 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 uh, this makes it so if you are touching the tag and score equals three, then we will do debug.log you win, but it's not score, it's going to be keys. And we'll save that, then we can test it. We will go ahead and kind of cheat our way through move it here move it here here and now i already know our peach doesn't have a collider of any sort so we're going to need to give it a rigid body um, with no gravity and a collider Collider is going to be a polygon collider, and we need to tag our Princess Peach. So, tag, add tag, Princess, set her tag to Princess, then we run it. And, okay, so we have this if statement working correctly. Right, and so, um, Actually, instead of having our if statement, just do two separate things. We're going to say if your keys is three, you will un unlock the door. Okay, so um, first we need to set our door and have this door be like a, um, a wall. Okay, so our door, um, we can rename and have it be door and this way our door will tag with a walls so that we can't walk through it okay and it's going to need to have a box collider 2d and a rigid body 2d 
with no gravity scale. And now we can't walk into it, okay? So before we need to test to make sure uh, we can't walk through that, we need to pause its, we need to set its constraints for the rigid body, okay? Because it's right now it can be uh, affected and moved but we need to freeze its uh, position, okay? And also freeze its rotation. And so we can simply test, can't get through it. Yep, so we won't be able to get in to see Peach um, until we have our three. And so in order to destroy um, on three keys, so we should do just in general on the update, we don't need to do that if in a collision method. So if keys equals equals three, we'll do greater than or equal to three, just in case we wanna add in more keys or something. We can destroy um, uh, the wall, excuse me, we can destroy the door game object. Okay, but we don't have a reference to the door game object yet, so we're gonna need to create that too. So public game object, that's all it is. So um, if we do public and have game object, there's an error here. So if you have an error in your code, uh, it, won't, it won't run and won't fix this. But now that that is fixed, it is asking for the door game object, we can drag in our door. Okay, so now that that's drug in, we will destroy door. So, whereas before it wouldn't have known what door was, now we've set door to a value of door that we dragged in over here, okay? We're gonna go ahead and change keys greater than or equal to three to just keys equals three. Um, and once we do that, when keys is two, it'll still be there, but when keys is three, we're able to go in there. And then you win, um, we're gonna need to change that. We're gonna create a second text and have this text only appear. So we're gonna rename this you win. We're gonna say you win all caps. There we go. And it would be like yellow or something. So it stands out from the maze. Uh, font size, let's increase the font size. Notice that if you increase it too much, you won't be able to, it needs to be able to stay inside that box. So if you increase it, it'll disappear. If you go too crazy with it. Um, okay, move it to where you want it to go. Something like that. Now, the problem with that is that's what it'll pop up with when you start. You don't want that. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna go into our maze and we're gonna have a second text. Public text, you win. Control S. And you're gonna drag your you win right there for you win. And now when we use you win, instead of doing that, we need to do you win dot text equals you win and then that will show up as our text in that color because we set it like that. So you win. Okay, and now that we have everything in there, move all your positions back to where they were. Move your player. Finally. So now that you got it one, you got yourself your maze game.
hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys felt it was worthy of a like, I'd really appreciate it. Um, and if you make sure you don't miss the next video, make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next time. Please stick around for some bloopers and some suggestions for other videos you might want to watch. One thing I forgot to do was save, and this is very important. If you see an asterisk right here, it means you've made changes and you haven't saved. So control S, control S to save. Okay, so control S and save that. Control S. If we go back into our player, into our player script, if we control S, control S,